So hello everyone, my name is Matthias Humbert. I'm a senior researcher at the Cyber Defense Campus here in Switzerland. And this is joint work with my former colleagues at CISPA Helmholtz Center in Germany and at the Berlin Institute of Health. So today I'm gonna to talk about membership inference attacks against DNA methylation databases. So we have two main things in this title, membership inference attacks and DNA methylation. So let me start to introduce what membership inference attacks are. Membership inference attacks is the ability to infer that a certain target is in a specific database. So imagine you have a specific, uh, some specific profiles about a, a target, for instance, a genomic uh, profile, and you want to know whether this um, profile is part of a um, data set, right? And actually, uh, this can become uh, sensitive, privacy sensitive, if the data set contains only uh, data about HIV patients, for instance, because then if you know that this target, this victim is part of the data set, you will also infer that it carries, he or she carries uh, HIV. So this attack has gained a lot, a lot of momentum in research over the last uh, few years, actually, as shown by the various awards that um, uh, these kind of attacks got already. So for instance, membership inference attacks against location data got the best paper award at NDSS 2018. Membership inference attacks against machine learning has got the Caspar Borden Award for outstanding research in privacy in 2018. And the membership inference attacks against uh, methylation beacons got the best paper at NDSS uh, 2019. Okay, now how about DNA methylation data? So DNA methylation data are biomedical data. Uh, DNA methylation is kind of the most prevalent epigenetic mechanisms uh, known at the moment. And it is associated with human health status. For instance, a hyper or hypomethylation is known to be associated with cancer, okay? So as such, it is very sensitive data and its privacy must be protected. The problem is that the, the amount and the availability of uh, DNA methylation is following the same trend as genomic data. So there is an exponential growth of data, of methylation data that is not only available on store on, on, on private databases, but also on very public one, for instance, for research purposes. And this is the gene expression omnibus that we see on the right hand side is an example of this exponential growth of, of the number of samples that are available uh, online. And obviously there are uh, multiple parties that are interested in uh, getting access to this uh, uh, very sensitive medical data for various purposes, obviously, but for instance, to, uh, to, to, monetize, to monetize the data. So let me now show you the, the kind of big picture of the attack against methylation database. So we have, assume we have a, a data set of um, uh, DNA methylation, so of uh, M DNA methylation position of N individuals, okay? It, who may all uh, carry HIV. Now, uh, for, for instance, researchers release uh, summary statistics about a subset of the methylation values. For instance, uh, the average values of uh, methylation. And then we have an analyst who may be adversarial who also has access to the actual DNA methylation values of a victim V. So now the objective of the attacker is to determine whether this victim V is member of the data set uh, T by using only the summary statistics about this data set and the victim's methylation values. So now how, how, what are our contributions with respect to the state of the art and what is the novelty with respect to the state of the art? So there are several differences in the, in the data types that, we, that was considered before that we consider today in this, in this work. So first, the data dim dimension. The data dimension of DNA methylation is different than previous work. Uh, for instance, genomic data is in the order of uh, 10 power 8, whereas uh, micro -N expressions are rather in the thousands. So the animation is a bit in between. Now, more importantly, uh, in terms of data types, the animation are, are, are quite different from uh, previously studied uh, 
biomedical data. So for instance, genomic variants are encoded uh, as uh, with three values at each position, so zero, one, or two, whereas for instance, microRNA expression take value uh, in R, so take real values. But DNA methylation is, uh, takes value between zero and one, real value between zero and one, so it's bounded because it's, it represents a proportion of methylation uh, at a given position. And finally, in terms of time evolution, we know that our genome is very stable over, over our whole lifetime. So genomic variants are very stable. Micro and expression are varying a lot, uh, no matter the position. But, and DNA methylation are varying more or less depending on the position. So in this work, we have, uh, so we have studied this new type of biomedical data. And to do so, we have designed and evaluated three uh, different membership inference attacks. The first one is uh, based on the state of the art, actually, is uh, statistical attacks based on L1 distance and likelihood ratio test. The second one is an attack based on machine learning, which is uh, the first attack in the context of biomedical data using machine learning. And the last attack is an indirect attack that is based on the genomic data of the victim instead of the uh, DNA methylation profile of the victim. And we have evaluated this, uh, these three different uh, membership infants attack on no less than six uh, methylation data sets and one uh, genomic data sets containing in total more than 1300 patients. So now let's, uh, let me give you some results. So um, about, the, about our evaluation. Uh, in particular, we'll focus here on four different research questions and thus answers. So the first question that we ask ourselves is whether the uh, likelihood ratio test was outperforming the L1 distance test. So yes, it is the case. Uh, it outperforms it uh, by three to uh, six person depending on the data set. And this also confirms the theoretical results that the uh, likelihood ratio test gives the best uh, true positive rate for a given false positive rate. Second, we were uh, trying to see whether the machine learning approach was outperforming the statistical test. Yes, quite logically, it uh, outperformed the statistical test with a simple logistic regression model and with some carefully uh, crafted features. Moreover, Training the, training the machine learning on a different data set that uh, the test, the target data set actually also works quite well, actually. So even if the data sets come, the methylation data comes from uh, different tissues or have a different diseases, it works actually pretty well. Then what is the influence of the database size on the attack performance? So we've seen that uh, the attack success actually decreases monotonically with the, with the uh, databases, uh, with the database size, which is quite expected, but the, that the decrease is rather slow, actually. We have a, an AUC that is greater than 0 0.9 with 30 participants, and to get an AUC that goes below 0 0.8, we have to uh, make use of a database of more than 300 uh, participants. And finally, uh, the, for the last attack, we were trying to see if it's possible to perform membership inference against methylation databases by having access only to the genomic data of the victim. And yes, this is indeed possible, but the attack performance in this case uh, decreases by uh, two to five percent compared to the original uh, setting. So to conclude, we have seen that DNA methylation databases are also prone to membership inference attack that they are even prone to indirect uh, membership inference attack using only the genomic data of the victim, and that a data transferring attack is also possible with the machine learning approach, as future work will be crucial to uh, design robust and efficient uh, defense mechanism. Thanks. <laughs>